This video is brought to you by Slick Wraps. Slick Wraps are the wraps that can protect your phone for more than a year. I've been using them on my Galaxy S7 Edge for this past year, and it has kept my back glass from getting any sort of scratches. Not only have Slick Wraps protected my Galaxy S7 Edge, they've also provided a bit of flair. My favorite new Slick Wraps have to be the Animalactic series. Be sure to head to the link in the description to grab yours today. Before we jump into this video, make sure that you do click the subscribe button for more coverage on all the latest devices. And while you're subscribing, go ahead and click on that notification button so that you can be notified when all new videos release. What's up guys, Shane starts here with Droid Monitor X. The Verizon version of the Galaxy S7 and S7 Edge, which I have the Verizon S7 Edge, has finally received its Nougat update. I actually received mine about a week ago. As you can see here, we're now on Android version 7.0 and we're on the Android security patch level for February. So we actually do have February security patch. And if you click on the 7.0, that does bring up your Nougat Easter egg. So the very first thing you're probably going to notice right off the bat is the new UI. So this UI is the same as the UI that we got from the Note 7. This is the Grace UI. The first thing that struck me when I first booted up the device was the change in font. The font here is a little larger and easier to read as far as I'm concerned. And you'll even notice that on the lock screen as well. The font is just a little larger, a little cleaner and easier to read. And then of course we do have a little bit of difference in the folders and the applications itself. So all the stock Samsung applications have a different theme. And you can kind of see that here with the calculator, calendar, camera, clock. These are the same icons that we had on the Note 7 with the Grace UI. And you guys can see the difference in the folders as well. Also the background of the app drawer is just a blurred version of your wallpaper, which is different from Marshmallow. If we open up a folder, you guys can see it's the same thing here on the folder with a blurred out background. Also in the app drawer, you'll notice that you now have a search. So if you have hundreds of applications, you can easily just search for the application you need. If you pull down the notification panel, you'll notice a row of quick toggles. You also notice that the brightness slider is no longer there. You do have to pull down the full panel in order to grab your brightness slider there. So in the quick toggles, you'll notice a performance mode, a blue light filter, and instead of the torch mode that we had for the flashlight in Marshmallow, now you have just the flashlight. And then of course you can edit these uh, one thing new here in the notification panel is the button layout. You can have a three by three grid or even a five by three grid. If we check out this five by three grid, you'll see that it really condenses things and gives you just more toggles to access there on the front page. Jumping back into our settings, you'll see that everything is just a whole lot cleaner and more condensed here. Things are easier to access and they're not as spread out as they were before. The theming is a little different with these lighter, more pastel colors. Multitasking has also been improved here in this update. We've had multi-window on Samsung devices for quite a while, uh, but if you do press the multitasking button, you'll notice that you do have all of these applications running in the background that are available. If you press this little button here, that's gonna open up a new window and you can press that on another application. That gives you split screen. Of course, you can adjust the size of these. So you can also just drag and drop for split screen view, which is a nice little feature. And the one feature that's really great here is the double tap on recents button to multitask so you can go back and forth between applications. If you double tap on the recents button here, it's going to take you to the last application that you had open. So this is really great for multitasking. If we do go into our settings real quickly, I'll show you a few more display options that are available now. You do have the blue light filter, which reduces eye strain by limiting the amount of blue light emitted by the screen. This is great for when you're trying to go to bed and you know that yellow light or the white light keeps your eyes active and keeps you from falling asleep. The blue light filter will help you to sleep and also just reduces the stress on your eye from looking at a screen all the time. You'll see here that now you have the option to choose your screen resolution. Once the updates come through, you're gonna be set at 1080p. That's gonna to help to save some battery. You can even set it all the way down to 720p, which should help with performance and battery life. Of course, if you want to use the QHD display, which it's capable of, you would have to select that and then apply. Nougat comes with Doze on the go, which means that your phone can remain in a hypersleep mode, even when your phone is in your pocket. In the old version of Doze, any kind of movement that triggered your phone meant that it exited Doze mode or the deep sleep mode, but now you can have Doze on the go, which I have to say, unfortunately, that after this over the year update, I've seen suffering battery life with my S7 Edge. I've had great reception, so that's not the issue. But if I go real quickly into my gallery, here is my battery from yesterday. 
uh, when I had 24% left, I had about three hours of screen on time. So I was trending for about four hours, which is not terrible. Here I had two hours and 45 minutes with 17% left. Still not trending terrible. I could have probably got to three and a half hours on that day. Here I got all the way down to 8% battery life in just eight hours and 30 minutes and only used the screen 20% of the time. So as you can see, it seems like battery life is suffering a bit. I'd I've only been running this for about a week, so maybe it gets better. I'm not really sure. Um, but so far, battery has just been kind of mediocre. It's not been great. This update also includes better graphics and virtual reality mode. Uh, that's due to the Vulkan API, which offers high performance 3D graphics, which gives apps sharper images and a more lifelike feel. As far as performance is concerned, this phone seems to be running quite a bit faster after the NuGet update. With Marshmallow, I could see that my S7 Edge was beginning to bog down like Galaxy phones normally do after about six to seven months of use. They normally begin to bog down, but this update has breathed new life into the phone and I feel like it just performs much better and I'm not experiencing the lag that I was experiencing on Marshmallow. There were even times on Marshmallow where the phone would bog down so much that I even needed to reboot the phone, but I haven't experienced any of that since updating to Nougat. The camera app is now gesture based. You'll notice that a lot of the settings and options are gone from the first screen here, but if you swipe to the left, you're gonna get all those options that you're used to. It's just a little easier to access those. And then swiping over to the right, you're gonna get all of your filtering options they're nice and easy to grab. And then flipping up is going to show the selfie camera. Flipping down is gonna go back to that rear facing camera. And of course, tap to focus, still super fast. Taking pictures, still super fast. In the privacy settings, you'll also notice a private mode if you turn this on. All right guys, that about wraps it up for my review of the Android 7.0 Nougat update for the Verizon Galaxy S7 and Galaxy S7 Edge. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel for more content like this in the future. You can find more of me at droidmoderx.com. Follow me on Twitter at droidmoderx. Thanks guys for watching. Be blessed. I'll see you in the next one.